Hey everybody, this is David from Another Zelda Podcast, and I am here um, narrating this video of me playing A Link to the Past, which, um, we, full disclosure, I'm recording this narration after Kate and I have now recorded the Season 2 finale, which was of A Link to the Past, and um, I did play this, of course, these are my recordings of playing the game for that review, and here I am now narrating my time um, playing them. Oh yes, Book of Medora here. This was, as I said in the episode, this was a real journey to figure out how this game worked. I um, jokingly said that I should call this playlist um, Watch David Suck at a Link to the Past because I definitely came into this experience with, so I, you know, even learning Book of Midori here, I'm sorry, getting a little distracted by the gameplay, but I came into this experience having to kind of relearn or unlearn all the things that I had learned from previous Zelda games because this is obviously one of the early ones. I remember being curious about if this was a one-way switch or not. So I just wanted to kind of test it out and try the Book of Midora again to see if those three faces would rotate around the other way. And they didn't, so it's a one-way switch. You're going into the going into the dungeon no matter what. The boomerang, I I played a lot of the original Legend of Zelda, and that's just my default. I always go to the boomerang. So this is actually the first dungeon I recorded. I did play the, the first dungeon. <laughs> this is the second dungeon, but the first one that I recorded. I did play the first dungeon, and after that realized, hey, maybe I should set up a little screen recorder, or a little, you know, HDMI recorder, and so I put my SNES Mini through that and recorded. This is classic. I spoke about this on the final episode. This was me trying to figure out how... I forget what these guys are called. We talked about them on the main episode. I was thinking, okay, eyeball? No. I, you know, usually it's like, arrow to the eyeball. Absolutely not. Also, even learning like what is something I can hide behind and what is something I cannot. I also had a hard time figuring out the hit detection of the corners of these walls. But I'm just kind of working it through. I'm thinking, I'm also, I'm assuming that I have to defeat this bad guy. Because, of course, in Ocarina, you do. Jar, nothing. Oof. I got hit a lot by these lasers in the beginning. And I had issues where I thought I was safe around corners. And then I remember, you know, like in Ocarina, you use a bomb. Whoa. I start to learn. Okay, let's bomb this guy. Try to hide behind a pillar. Nothing. I thought, well, maybe you don't defeat them. Probably another laser. Here it comes. Oh, just missed me, right? But all in all, I really enjoyed uh, playing this game. But see, right there, like that. I thought for sure that I would have been um, safe. Because Super Nintendo, or, or rather A Link to the Past is the game, of course, that uses like the two layers of depth in every screen. And so I was still learning what's a bit background layer and what's a forward layer. And then this is probably an example of... <laughs> you know, it's so funny how you almost get so used to Z-targeting and locking on and what what is hit detection in a 2D game. And with that said, I play the Game Boy games, Oracle of Ages and Seasons and A Link to the Past often. I like them very much. I also enjoy the Minish Cap, and I've played, played the Minish Cap a number of times. And they work on a slightly different engine, so I'm just getting hit left and right here. I'm just kind of learning what it takes. I figured you can stun these, and then, okay, as they're going in and out of the ground, you can't hit them. There, that's an example of how when you're swinging to the left or right, you can't change your direction up or down while you're swinging, which you can do in a link in the link in the Link's Awakening engine, you could say. Another example, I thought for sure that would hit that guy, but you have to wait for the enemy to come out of the dirt. Okay, so let's see here. Exploring around, exploring around. It's like seven doors right off the bat in this in this dungeon. I knew better than to jump down from there. I almost wanted to, just to test it out. Again, also with a 2D game, it's like, okay, push everything, don't push, bomb, of course. Link's Awakening kind of trains you, and of course the original, The Legend of Zelda, trains you to try to bomb. If there's a, if there is not something in the way, in the middle of a, of a wall, bomb it. Of course, by now, a lot of this stuff is starting to get, oh my gosh, I'm going to get hit by that thing. Ooh, nice dodge. Yeah, power, power to the pots here. I seriously underestimated how much they'd be helpful. How strong they are throwing a pot at something.
<laughs> trying to figure out what's going on. There, there's another one where I couldn't turn my direction after a swing. But it was fine. I figured I could probably hide behind these things. They looked like they were tall enough. And I thought, okay, it's more of a line of sight thing. I thought maybe I'm supposed to push those little walls. Get out of there! Just kind of building my mental map here as I was going. I like, I've kind of just counted the two doors and I didn't... I died a lot while playing this game and I didn't want to die that much just yet. So I thought, let me get a few more rooms in my memory here. Because the map for A Link to the Past is fine. It's very vague, which I don't mind. Um, yeah, look at that hit detection. Nothing happens until they come out. This was an easy one. We all know. Arrows into the eyes. And I think you kind of learned that on the first dungeon, or even um, a little bit of the castle, perhaps. Buttons. A lot of buttons in A Link to the Past. A lot of things under pots in A Link to the Past, which more than I expected. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Link's Awakening trains you. If you see torches, light them. And so I lit these. I thought, oh, certainly. I, need to I actually thought I needed to light the torches to make, like, a treasure chest appear. Didn't realize it was going to be a pot under a button. I'm thinking there's got to be more to this room. Why don't the torches do anything? I remember thinking. I don't recall if I actually bombed stuff. Oh, yeah, I wanted to check if there was a room north, I guess you could say, of this room. Didn't look like there was. Because those, those, those walls on the top of the room were very suspicious. They felt like they needed to get bombed. All those pillars up there, between the pillars. I think my, I might even try it. Oh, I do. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's been about a month since I watched this. I think I do choose to go and explore the left and, and the south, the southern parts. Oh, yeah, this was a funny one. Just key sitting there. I, um... I decided to Twilight Princess it and run into the thing and knock it over like you do in the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess. But obviously, it's done here first. Look at that. It's just crazy how long it takes to hit something. I did not know if I could hide behind pots uh, in this part, you know? It seemed like maybe... That was a line of sight thing there. Maybe you can hide behind the pots. Huh? Okay, button. Button under a pot. Is this the item? Is this the master key? Or not <laughs> the master key, the um yeah. The dungeon key. What are they calling this one? Oh yeah, again, with the with the torches. I was like, alright, let's do this. Nothing's happening. The big key, that's right, that's what they call it. I'm like, what am I missing? I'm lighting the torches! <laughs> Okay, noted. Oh, push that button again. Now it's time to go south. This is where I start to not die a lot, but I remember like now is where I started thinking, okay, I kind of know where this big key is. I think I'm getting a little bit more in the flow. Okay, if I remember correctly, I have another misfired pot here. Oh yeah, it's like, did that get him? Did it not? Go for it! Nope. <laughs> He's not fully spawned yet. Oh man. I don't even know if I would notice these things if back in the day when I would, if I were to have played this back in 93 or whatever. Oh, this room. Oh, this room. I thought, okay, we've got some torches. That should open the door. Nope, didn't open the door. I thought, alright, we've got some blocks. we got to push the blocks. Pushing the blocks, pushing blocks, trying to push these blocks. Not getting a lot of action. I obviously didn't push the blocks well enough, because those of you who have played this dungeon... <laughs> know what happened. No, what? No, you know what happens in that room. Cool. I thought, maybe can I reach it with my sword? Because you can kind of do that. But I didn't want to fall down there, I didn't want to go through, through, through all that. If I pushed to the right too far. This became kind of obvious. I was like, oh, okay, okay, I'm going to be getting the power glove or some kind of power gauntlet, gauntlet glove in this thing. 
That's obviously like the key to the second half of the dungeon type of thing. The item being the key in a way. So I didn't think I could go north there. As I learned the hard way later on. I'm kind of thinking like, what do I got to do? And okay, obviously there's some rooms to the right. We've got to head over that way. Do I run for it? I do. Get over there. Let's go south. Key. I had a key. My Twilight Princess it. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Get that boomerang back. Can I hide? Do I hide? Yeah. It opened, but I still want that chest, I know. A compass. Right, so now I'm looking for treasure, little treasure chests. It's pretty clear that f floor one and two are going to be after whatever the item is that I get. Oh, I don't remember this room. What is this? Oh, yeah. Is this the item? Oh, it was the big key. Okay, and then I remember thinking, okay, well, I'll just go on back to the big key chest. Which makes sense. It's kind of neat how the big key opens chests in this game, which give you items. The big key does not necessarily give you the... Like, boss key. Boss keys. What am I doing? Just looking around? Okay. Get out of here. More lasers. Getting a little better with the pots. I don't think I've actually died yet in this video. There's a... There's a I definitely... Edge of Tomorrow, this thing, in a little bit here. Or Live, Die, Repeat, whichever you prefer. Oh no, it's the wrong way. Maybe I remember in a minute here. Oh. I think I'm forgetting that the big key's up top. Because I was so obsessed with this little door down here. What's the, what's the macro puzzle? What's the big puzzle that I'm not seeing? Like, there's something I'm missing. I mean, there is something I'm missing, it's just not what I was thinking. A bee? Yeah. No fairies, no potions. I feel like this is like it's not gonna be with me here. Can't get through that door. Oh god. David. Get that heart! Okay. On the edge of survival here. Right on the brink. Oh yeah, and then even like these patterns on the walls. See these, um, they're just texture, I think, but I was kind of like, do I bomb those at some point? I don't know if I'd make that choice here or in a future dungeon. I can't... Oh, I guess I am exploring them here. Isn't that funny how it triggered at the same time as I watched this? It triggered while I played. Fine, fine, fine. I'm kind of desperately looking for hearts right now. Real risk reward here. Oh gosh, come on, do not die here. I think I'm going to. The door doesn't do a thing. Nothing with the torches. Go up. Remember where the big cube thing was. Do I check my map? Oh. Man, you know the Super Nintendo days, they loved things that spit stuff at you. They love fireballs. There's a lot of games. Contra 3 has a lot of that. Other fireballs in the, in the 90s. Though I guess there's a little bit of that in the original Legend of Zelda with the, the Zoras when they. I think those are Zoras, right? When they spit at you. Oh, of course they are. The River Zoras. Okay, getting some hearts. Now get out of there. Get that bee out of there. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. It's still with the torches. I'm like, come on, let's do it. Power glove. The power glove? That's what they call it. That's so funny. It's so bad. Not so fast. There you go. So hopefully I do rec remember to go pick up those stones now. Still missing what's actually going on in this room that I'm going into right now. 
still not solving the puzzle. I'm thinking, okay, it's a it's a bigger puzzle, it's a macro puzzle, I'm gonna go get something else, I'm gonna come back around, I'm gonna hit a switch, I'm gonna make a full floor drop, I'm gonna do something. This one seemed kind of clear. Whenever you see these V's, it's like, oh, we should probably push one of these. There we go. Oh, I did not expect the tiles. Actually, I remember think. Oh, there's a key. I remember think. Yeah, so many keys in jars. I was not used to that being a puzzle mechanic in this game. I was always expecting to kind of earn the keys as you do, like in Twilight Princess. I think I die here, honestly. I'm trying to power through. I'm going to take a tile to the face. I'm sure of it. There it is. Sorry, Link. Alright, save and continue. That was handy. I think as you go outside and come back in, that's why they start you with that door, technically. Which was kind. Oh! See, like, are you serious? Line of sight through the angle? Through the corner? I start to learn. I realize, I think I realize I have a key and it's more like just get out of that room. Alright, taking the cool. I thought this bridge was neat. Nice, nice little aesthetic thing. Okay, this is probably a kill all the bad guys puzzle. That's what I was expecting here. A little bit like Link's Awakening, where maybe you get all the bad guys and the key drops, but the door's just open. This is the room. This is it. I spoke about this in our season two finale episode. This is the room. I don't know if, if I was thinking too big about it, but I saw these torches and I thought, ah, here's the culmination. All the other torches have been red herrings. And I'm supposed to, this is the puzzle. I'm supposed to light all these torches as I'm dodging the lasers. I can do it, I can do it. Just push through, get there. And then nothing happens. I was like, what? And I thought, okay, I'll stay to these corners. What do I gotta do? You can get hit in that corner, are you kidding me? I was very frustrated by the li the sight lines, I guess you could say, in this room. I was like, okay, kind of learning my way. Push the thing, get out of there. Get out of this room, just go. I, do I run? Oh, I, I kind of run. Get past the bridge, let's keep going. Got to do this room all over again. That was a little frustrating, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, at this point, I'm kind of like, what do I got to do in the other room? What's the puzzle, is what I was thinking. Turns out there isn't a puzzle. Turns out you just have to <laughs> pick a thing up. So it's like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out this puzzle. I'm pushing things, I'm pulling things. Yeah, actually, I thought maybe I can push and pull these statues to change line of sight to light the torches. I don't think you're safe there. You're such bad... You just get hit so much. Now notice, those of you who know what actually happens in this room, notice the jars that I'm picking up. Completely by accident, which jars I'm not picking up. Alright, death. Here we go again. I think I put this in fast forward for you guys. Yeah. Alright, up through. Cross the bridge. Kill the guys in the room. Blah, blah, blah. Here we are. We're back. Okay. Still not sure. Still convinced that it's a torch puzzle. Because, I mean, they're in, they're in odd spots. It seems like they want to be there. They're not just, like, symmetrical. So many lasers to the face. And then you get flustered. Look at that. I've picked up every single jar except the one I need to, those of you who've played this dungeon before. Look at this bad luck. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's necessarily bad luck. Just the way it worked out. Okay, here we go. Back into the fast forward, going up through, over the bridge, thinking to myself, what is happening? Alright, back in the room. What am I going to do? I'm starting to get kind of frustrated. I'm starting to think to myself, like, I don't... There's something I'm not seeing. I was trying to think, what's the logic of the room? I'm trying to, like, figure out what does the room want me to do. And it turns out... Maybe it happens here. Maybe it happens next time. I'm starting to just fight for my life here and trying to figure out. I'm going to get hit. Come on. I've got to learn that that's not a good corner. Hanging on to hearts. 
totally lost. Maybe there's a certain amount of time. I got nothing. Don't. You're going to get hit. Get out of that corner. I'm lost. I wasn't sure what to do. around, thinking, is there something I missed in another room? So here we go. This might be part of it. Start going backwards. Oh yeah, yeah. Like this room's a dead end, obviously. I hope some of you who have played this dungeon before are seeing the two things that I missed so far. Two little tiny little things that I've missed so far. I'm like, I'm like out of it. I got, I got that one dark room. I've gone through all of this second half of the dungeon. You know, right here, like after the power glove part. I thought, well, there is some of there are some of these outdoor areas. Maybe I can investigate that a little bit more. Oh, I think I kind of thought like, okay, my answer must be in this room here. My answer must be in this room. Light these torches. Like Pavlov's dog. You see a torch, you gotta light it. Try these again. I kind of tried them quickly last time. I thought maybe I wait for the push animation on every single one of them. Push animation. Push. I'm going the wrong directions. I guess I'm not trying hard enough. See, and then you can get shot through those. And it was difficult. But I'm not complaining. <laughs> I mean, I'm complaining a little bit, but it's a little unfair. Completely at a loss. So at this point, I think I go into fast forward here if I remember. Maybe not yet. Check out, pushing, trying to survive. I'm like, I'm gonna push every single one of these. Okay, I think those four are sufficiently. I was like, what? Oh my gosh, what? And then again through the angle. Now, I think I was excited about this. It was put them in the jars. Put those fairies in the jars. But I forgot you gotta get out your fairy net. There we go. I think I had to get rid of the bee here probably, right? Oh, I accidentally grabbed it. Okay, that's fine. So now I thought, okay, well that didn't give me an answer to the other room. I mean, I guess I figured out that I had to push that one block, which I didn't push well enough. Looking, there's gotta be a treasure, there's a thing, there's something, is there a key? What am I missing? So herein lies my journey, which I think I go into fast forward here. I hope I do. Yeah. I go back through the entire dungeon. I backtrack every room, looking around, trying to figure out what did I miss? What did I miss? What did I miss? I'm thinking, okay, I'm trying to get my bearings. <laughs> oh boy it's so funny knowing in retrospect or in hindsight okay going up check out go through the, these bullet things again don't know why I keep thinking that's gonna work nothing David. Here we go, more fast forward. Like, I actually tried it. I thought, what am I missing? Maybe I gotta go out here. I thought it was interesting that the little faces had reset. I was like, no. I don't think that was it. Get me back in there. <sighs> what to do, what to do? Get hit by bad guys, that's what you do. At a certain point, you're kind of... Oh, the jump. See, it's okay. I just didn't realize you still have to wait for that. They don't... They're not... 
There's no hit detection when they're coming in and out of the sand. There we go. There we go. Now you're learning, David. Gotta play the game the way the game wants to be played. At least with these early ones. Alright, here we go. Continuing the adventure. Trying to find a solution. Trying to find a solution. Trying to find everything. Checking every room. We went all the way to the right. To the left. Went everywhere. Okay, let's try the button. Uh, do I even go up? I don't know. I probably... Yeah, okay, fine. Nothing here. Do I bomb the top? Nothing. Torches. Pushing. I mean, this was like a half an hour of my time running around like this. Okay. Alright, let's just go back to that room. Where we'll figure it out. Push this thing down. Run. Just go. I remember crossing this bridge and getting into this room and just being like, I'm at a loss. I honestly don't know what to do anymore. Just pulling stuff. <laughs> A little bit, a little easier stepping now with this uh, laser face. That's his official in canon name, I believe, right? So I remember being almost at my end here, kind of thinking, like, I honestly don't know what to do anymore. I don't. And I try to play these all in one session. I try to not pause and go back. Well, I'm just gonna play it safe. Be careful. Get hit in the back of the head by a laser. Get hit in the front of the face with a laser. Oh, the front of my face! David. Come on. <laughs> Alright, picking up jars. Maybe I can just keep getting hearts. I remember thinking, okay, I'll just keep getting hearts, I guess, while I try to figure out what's going on. Nothing, no hit detection. But look at this. Look at this. Though some of you know. Do I, if I die here, oh my goodness. Here it is. This is the moment. I slowed it down. There was a key in the one jar that 30 minutes ago I did not pick up. A key in that jar. That was the moment. Moving on. 10 feet away. A key in a jar. Couldn't believe it. Oh, there's another key in a jar. Great. This was all pretty smooth after this. Oh, I thought this was kind of funny. I think, um, finally the torches matter in this part, don't they? It's like, okay, trigger him. Let's double arrow him. And I just, you can kind of tell when you see this wall on the left side. Everybody can tell. No, no, no. Wrong spot. There you go. It's kind of fun. I'm sure, oh man, if I would have seen this as a kid, my mind would have been blown. I would have been like, what? arrow and I don't know if I beat this boss in the first try we kind of Kate and I kind of talked about this on the final episode the season two finale where I expected I could only hit their heads when they were coming in and out of the ground because I, I assumed <clears throat> pardon me I assumed that I couldn't contact make contact with these sprites when they were theoretically above link in the air like if this was actual 3d space so you can see I'm actually waiting and trying to just hit them when they're going in and out of the ground. I learned later that that's really not... That's more of just a visual thing. You can attack them at any point. Two hearts. Alright, a little tap there. That was my whole strategy. I was like, can I just get their faces to hit the sword then, I guess, when they're going back into the ground? Do you have a fairy? Sure. I wonder if I start playing around with the arrows. I do. Yeah, fishy, fishy. Just a little sword tap. I mean, you see what I'm trying to do here? There, there, that was a ex perfect example of how the, the bad guy was still up in the air. And Link was able to make 
contact, and then that hit detection's gone. Yeah, I did start noticing that the stones that would fly out of the air when they came out of the ground would hurt you. I did not notice that at first. Oh. One down. Oh, yeah, yeah, one down. I really hope I don't die here. <laughs> oh, taking hits. No fairies left. I, it's been a while. I can't remember. I think I might not make it. I was getting desperate. There, there's another one where I, I hit it when it was up in the air, but I didn't realize. I was still thinking I had to do the ground thing. Okay. Maybe I do make it with one heart. Oh my gosh, if I do this. For me, I will be proud. <laughs> Spitting out eight things now. Ooh. Come on. Is this it? That's a good hit. Get the right angle. There they are. Missed it. Get in a dead spot. Come on. Ooh, this is a tricky one. Gotta get out of there. Something? Maybe I do it. There it is. There it is. Wow. Oh, so that was me playing Desert Palace for the first time ever in my entire life. Yeah, actually, first time ever. Playing A Link to the Past was a blast. I'm going to release these dungeons every couple weeks. Season 3 will start before these are all done. I'm just going to put these up on YouTube. Thank you so much Thank you so much for watching me play this. And um, if you're inclined to go check out our Season 2 finale, you may do that. We have, If you're watching this, yeah, of course you're watching this on YouTube. We've got some links over here to the left to go check stuff out. All right, everyone. So this is... You know, it's interesting. This is not a let's play. This is not me showing you how to play. This was almost an adventure that I took learning how to play A Link to the Past. And so I hope you join me for future episodes. It's just a little side thing here that we'll do. All right, everybody. Uh, see you next time. <laughs>